All right, what's going on, guys? Um, I'm starting my long-awaited distributor oil seal video. All right, there she is. This is the single jingle. My uh, built H had to be sold due to adulting, but nonetheless, there will be time for that. You know, I've got the lovely Mishimoto coupler that has 10 horsepower. And please don't mind that my bracket is not in place as I've replaced this before, but the issue has reoccurred. So what we're looking here, guys, we have a distributor O-ring that has gone out. So the telltale sign of this is usually, you know, a big mess of oil on the bottom. As you can see, I kind of put a rag here to try and catch any extra. Um, but this will affect a lot of things. So we have all of these sensors down here. Yeah, I think that's a cool and temp sensor. I'll have to Google or look these up. I'm sorry, I don't want to misinform anyone. Like I said, I am still learning. But nonetheless, the oil will drip down and make a mess on your connectors. And if it's been happening long enough, it'll actually start to eat away at the casing and causing electrical issues. So the secondary damage of this is actually your VSS. So if your speedometer does not work, more than likely you're getting oil on it or you have a short somewhere. But I'm, I'm hoping I, I fixed the issue on that. I fixed my speedometer, so I will be making a video on that. Um, this one is basically going to focus. I don't want to give a long intro. Please excuse the noise. <laughs> but I don't want to give a long intro. I want to get straight to the point. This is my first video. And we're basically going to start by verifying the concern. And as you can see, we, we have oil. All right, you can feel the bottom of the distributor cap. We have oil. All right, so we're going to remove these three bolts here. One, two, and three. I will post a picture. I have the um, service data available for this, but not for the actual procedure, just for the timing. All right, one important thing to note, guys, is when you remove the distributor, you wanna make sure you mark it. I know, I believe this model does have a safety in the grooves, so you can't put it 180 out of timing, but on other models you may. So let's start with that. I'm gonna take these off and we're gonna make sure that everything's up to par. All right, you guys, I've taken off the three screws for the distributor cap. As you can see, we have oil. Ooh, all righty. So, gonna make sure we make a scribe mark of some sort. Just keep noted where the rotor is here, because this will shift slightly when you remove it. So you can make a scribe mark somewhere, just note. I usually look at it, all right, the rotor's pointing towards the hole. This thing has a notch on it, so it only goes one way. All right, so this was just to take the cap off, show you guys how to look for this. All right, we have oil. All right, so we will be removing this. And I do have the Dorman part number. I got this from AutoZone. Comes with a lifetime warranty. You can swap it out. Good thing that I do, because this is my second time doing it. So, I, have, I may have a, uh, a ventilation issue, but this does come with two of them. I know these are finicky, and the aftermarket ones I've heard are kind of eh, so we're going to see. All right, now I just want to take it off, note the rotor position, and usually there's a bracket or something. Mine, mine's a little like jangled just from being beat up over the years, <laughs> but we're going to take off the three bolts. Again, I have the service data I will pull up, so we're going to take the three bolts off and I took the cap off to note the rotor position. All right, guys, I got the three 12 millimeter bolts off. I've got the pigtails off. If these give you any trouble, you can always stick like a small flat head underneath and kind of wiggle jiggle along the borders. You can see mine's a little bent up from riding that edge. All right, guys, I'm gonna remove this. Just wiggle jiggle, wedge something in here right along the edge. And you want to say, like, you can note the position. Sometimes this will move. Oh. Sometimes it won't. But this is what we do. All right. We noted the position on here. All right. So you can mark it. I already knew where it was. I have video of it. And the back. Sorry, guys. It's kind of hard one handedly. Can wipe down and on other ones that don't have the safety groove on there 
you would mark the position. Make a couple scribe marks just to note where the grooves are at. Or a paint marker. All right, guys, and this is the part that goes bad right around here. It's the oil seal. And as you can see, it has a snap ring. And you can always grab a punch and mark the two spots so you know where the dizzy is. Well, like I said, I'll post the service that information. And the grooves on here are actually slightly different. So there's no way to put this 180 out of timing. All right. I'm going to get this set up inside. And I'm going to take these pins out and show you how to change oil seal. And meanwhile, guys, I always I just plug it so no debris gets in there, you know, no funky shit. Excuse me. But yeah, I'm doing that. All right. All right, guys, I brought the distributor in and. We're going to start by taking off the Dizzy Rotor. All right, as you can peek in, there's that screw you want to get. All right, now sometimes these might give you trouble. You can PB blast it, just be careful not to get any electronics. Um, they do get stubborn, just do not strip it. Take your time. All right, sorry for the horrible lighting. Cut the screw out. I pick one of these, you know, they got these relatively inexpensive, you can go into Harbor Freight, Sears, Crafts, and whatever. I'd really recommend getting one of these guys, it's going to save you a lot of trouble. Alright, got this rotor off, it should nudge off. Since I've serviced this before, sometimes these do get really rusted in here. So you can just stick a flathead and just be careful not to crack the housing or any of these guys under here so a lot of times people will try to wedge it i think these are crank position sensors if i'm not mistaken so people will try to wedge it and what you'll end up doing is you'll crack this and you, you don't want to do that you that could cause ignition issues this, this serves a purpose i will look it up I've got the rotor off put this to the side along with the cap and next off we are going to take off these from the igniter I believe this is the igniter all right wiggle jiggle you know be careful don't pull at them be careful not to strip any of these over here if you've had enough oil leaks these wires may become brittle so just double check your connections may you know if you can get in there with some electronics cleaner don't you know people use brake cleaner just make sure it evaporates they do make a spray specifically for electronics and it's made for a reason it's supposed to have like a higher evaporation rate etc and as you can see i've had to rewire my pigtails because the oil got to them <coughs> excuse me oil got to them so i had to literally repin everything it's a huge mess so this is just the second one we're, we're focusing on the distributor o-ring all right Gonna take this guy off, and I'm going to be careful taking off these connectors. Let's see if I get in there with a flat head. Sorry, guys, it's really hard to do this in one hand. There we go. Just be careful. You know, don't be don't be aggressive with it. And they should pop off. Alright, much easier with two hands. Again, connectors. You know, you can scrub these off. These may become patinaed or get build up on them over time. Uh, I really recommend using the dialect grease. You know, the stuff they sell at AutoZone that 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 goes a long way especially like right now I'm revisiting this and it's just going along smoother since the first time I had to visit it so I'm going to take off this guy here this here the 
this one here and this here. Keep in mind, this is for the, like, the top floor. So there is another layer under this, but I like to put these apart. I'm gonna show you how I separate them to make sure I put the screws back where they are. I like to grab a piece of cardboard or something. I'll, I'll take a picture right now. As I said, it's a lot harder to do with one hand, so please bear with me. All right, guys, screws are out the top floor. And this is kind of how just I organize them. Kind of draw like a little doodle and poke holes and keep the screws all together. So I'm going to actually remove these three next. Sorry for the lame picture, but there you go. And these actually hold like this base plate here that holds the igniter. So I'm gonna wiggle this guy out. There we go. And that is the Hitachi. All right. Keep in mind when you go to AutoZone and you ask for the O-ring seal, I believe they will ask what brand it is. So my brand is the Hitachi, and it has these type of fucking pigtails. Excuse my language. It has these kind of pigtails. Um, I do have all that on them. I'm gonna see if I can pull up what wire represents what, so that people know. I do have an ECU diagram as well. But this guy, if this guy fails, you, you'll get a no spark. So these are known to fail sometimes, especially if they get oil soaked. Luckily, mine hasn't gone out, <laughs> knock on wood. But, you know, sometimes you can just replace this instead of replacing the whole distributor. But I'm going to take this off. And keep in mind, guys, this one is still here. It's magnetic. It's one of the sensors. I had to, like, solder and liquid electric tape this because... It was still working, just the wires were all messed up. So this is all connected. In order to work more comfortably, I'm gonna take this off. I have to be careful not to not to not to fray the wires here or, or disrupt the connections. So I'm gonna try and work with it. Keep take this base plate off, and then we're gonna take off the whole pigtail holder. This little grommet here is gonna come off, and it's gonna give you more room to work. Because right? you want to be working comfortably and you don't want to mess up any wires or damage any of the connectors on the sensors. Alright guys, and next we're going to take off this snap ring here. And that's going to release this peg, this whole groove. And again, it's really hard to do with one hand, but they do make a tool for snap ring pliers. You can, you can get in there with like a little flat head and you should be alright. Give me one moment, be right back. So basically what I did here was grab this tiny flathead, stuck it in, and then twisted. So this allowed the snapping to come up a little bit. And again, one hand that is hard. Alrighty, so popping the snap ring off. Success. You know, inspect it, make sure it's not warped. Don't bend the crap out of it when you're pulling it off. Again, it has a purpose. Keep it that way. Uh, got this little peg in here. Is it magnetic? Hmm. Yeah. Slight thud. There we are. Little magnetic backing. And boom. Peg is out. Alright, again guys, um, make sure you scribed it, marked down somehow, you know, you can kind of see my old scuff, like one of my previous scuff marks, but again, make sure that that's the position, you don't want to get confused with old scribe marks like so, but luckily I have the position on video, so I know how to put it back, and again, I will post, these things have little grooves, these only fit one way on the Dizzy. So pull this guy off, has a little metal shim. I like to keep the placement as is, just sometimes it's important. Rub down, I keep those together in the way that they came off. All right, got all that off. And now this guy will wiggle, be able to wiggle loose when we take off the, um, the top base plate with the um, igniter on there. So that, and here is the actual oil seal that we will be replacing. Um, this guy you can pull out with like a pick, small flathead, 
You know, again, guys, I'm having trouble because I'm using one hand, so bear with me. So we're gonna get this guy off. We've got this, put to the side, you know, just make sure, clean it off, inspect it, make sure the peg isn't rusty, etc. how are the grooves. But we're gonna get the seal off, and then we're gonna continue taking off the interior of the, the distributor. Let's see here. Slip it in, and it should come right out like so. Like so, boom. All right. Now, on this one, I'm not sure if that seal failed, but lifetime warranty on this guy, so I'm just gonna swap out the whole kit. But I'm pretty sure it's the interior one. So we got that off, done with this step, and we're gonna flip this guy over. Alrighty, so kept the screw on there just to make sure that there's no end play on this. I don't want to damage the connectors again. We will have to wiggle jiggle this grommet out. As you can see, mine's got oil on it. Again, I've done this before, so it's not as hard as the first time. So I'm just gonna wiggle jiggle out. Make sure you don't damage any wires. You don't want to stick. You don't want to be too aggressive and stick like a flathead in there and accidentally fray your wire casing if it is already brittle from the oil. So, got that, got the three screws out. I'm gonna wiggle this out and we'll be right back. All right guys, got the base plate loose, got the grommet out, again, that right there. This is where you don't wanna just dig in because there is a second floor, per se, of the distributor, so. Again, being careful with the connectors. Here is our second floor, and as you can see, we still have connectors on there. So we can't take this off fully until we unscrew, boom, 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 those four. So give me one moment, and then I'll take this all apart. Alrighty. So, got the four screws out, and as you can see, that seal kind of gave out on me. Um, yeah, that's not gonna... Alrighty. So, I'm gonna take this out, and I'm showing you, because it's all one piece. Again, you gotta be careful with the connectors. I try to cradle it all out in one piece. Again, I need two hands for this. So, I'm basically gonna pour it into the other hand once. Alright. So, we're just gonna take a look at, I guess, the guts, per se, of the distributor. Alright. I don't mess with these I, I don't take them off they're balanced a certain way the shaft spins I leave it alone you know if it gets to the point where you need to replace any of these components then you probably just need a new distributor focus of this video is for the oil seal so just want to cradle this all out as you can see like my mine was all beat up so I had to like solder it put electric tape over it liquid electric tape yeah, but this is the condition. They, they do get oily, and that's it's it's a normal thing, the Honda thing. All right. So I'm not going to use this. I'm going to put this off to the side. Okay. And main focus here. Now we have the distributor housing, bones bare. All right. Take the seal off, and this is our problem area here. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna clear out all that old stuff. I don't wanna mar, I don't wanna scrape anything here because that's where the arm rides and how the distributor spins. Just kinda get all this cleaned up. I'm gonna get some spray, maybe some brake cleaner. Get in here, get all this old oil out, clean it up a bit. And then I'm gonna show you. We're gonna crack this guy open. Alrighty guys, we have unboxed the Dorman 917136 distributor seal kit. Comes with these little instructions. You know, remove the distributor cap, etc. Kind of gives you a rundown of what I've already done. The inside. Alright. Now it comes with two different seals. Again, I believe that's the difference between like the Hitachi model and I forgot what was the name of the other one. But um, honestly, the way that I do it, I like to dry fit it. 
um, don't be too aggressive with it. It should kind of give you some resistance. And then I tried the other one. Obviously, whichever has the snugger fit, which is this guy, this is what we're keeping. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one to the side. Back in a little baggie it came, so I don't get confused. This is the one I do not need. Boom. New O-ring, put it to the side. I usually grab the old part, wipe them down, because you have to give these back to get your warranty, apparently. And this guy. Set it off, keep the snap ring peg. So this guy, I like to kind of soak it in motor oil before I put it into the actual housing. So upon further inspection of mine, it seems as though this bushing that it rides on is cracked. You can see. Uh, you know, it might be shot. I'm just gonna put it back together for the sake of demonstration. And we're basically going to have this guy soaked in motor oil, we're going to seat it in, and then I'm going to grab a socket just about the size, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hammer it in, not, not, not aggressively, but just enough to seat this in. Alright, I got my seal soaked in the oil, got my 16 millimeter, bum, bum, bum. Got my 16 millimeter here. And again, we're gonna put that in, pop it over. Excuse me. Grab the seal here. Alright. The one where the spring is exposed is the back side. You can't see it really, but when you get one, there you go. That's the back. Want letters facing out. Place it in snugly. Make sure it doesn't catch on anything. Make sure it's flat level. Try to get it in with your finger as best you can. And I'm gonna place this over it and then lightly tap on this. I need two hands for this. Alrighty, and we are in. So you make sure it's seated. You can kind of run your finger along the lip of it. All right, you don't want to pound on it. You want to make sure that that's, that's pretty even. All right, and as soon as this guy is in, we're gonna reassemble. So luckily we have everything uh, <laughs> mapped out. All right, so I've got the oil seal in, bottom floors in, per se, sensors. As I was talking about, guys, you want to make sure you don't put stress on these parts, the connectors. So I like to support it. I'll grab like an old box. This is like, you know, cardboard liner. And this way all my screws stay in place. You know, I'm not beating up my table. And it has a nice little ledge. So I'm making sure I'm not putting any stress on these here. All right. So I'm gonna fit this grommet in. I'm gonna bolt these down. You don't have to torque them down. Just, you know, hand tight. Should be good. All right. We have got the guts in, the grommets in place. Make sure you keep these wires out of the way. You don't want them getting stuck under here. I'm gonna line this up. I'm gonna put these bolts in. You know, got my map to refer to. Boom, boom, boom. And we're gonna hook up the igniter. Right back. All right, guys. Everything's back in place. Got the igniter all hooked up. Again, you can just note how they were put back in reverse order. Make sure nothing, you don't put any wires through here because this piece obviously moves. This is what spins. All right. Grab it in. And now, just gonna move on to the back. Uh, fairly simple. We're going to install this O ring. And then we're going to put the snap ring with the peg back in there. All right. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. It should be relatively easy. Don't force it, you don't want to warp it. It should slip on like so. All right, and put this on just how I had it before. Boom and boom. All right, we're gonna line up that hole. 
this peg. Sorry, see if you can see it there. All right, cool. Don't forget that little, little washer there. All right, and... There we go. All right. Now, I need two hands for this. I gotta finesse this guy on, all right? But again, we just wanna make sure it gets on there. Seat it inside this groove. Don't warp it. And ta-da. All right, oil seal is on. Snap ring back in place, little peg. Grooves. And now we just have to put the housing back on. There is, excuse me, a gasket that goes here. Sorry, put the gasket on. Put this guy on. Alrighty. And just kind of massage it and it'll go in. Boom, boom. Alrighty. We match up the peg. Somewhere accessible. The notch on there. Spin it. And put our little screw. Remember guys, don't strip this. This it's a pretty big slot on there. Now I'm gonna leave it like so. I'm not gonna put the cap back on yet. You know, because I want to make sure that again when it's going in just as we left it before all right and i just want to ensure that it doesn't move during installation just one little trick i like to do i like to mark the cylinder i don't know if you can see it i just kind of hit it with a soldering iron that's cylinder two cylinder four Cylinder three, all right, like so, and I'll have this available as well. Take this out now, and we're gonna mount. Make sure there's no debris, no buildup on there, and we're going to mount our distributor again in the position that it was taken off, and we're gonna torque these bolts down to 13 newton meters. 13 foot pounds. All right, we've got the three bolts torqued down to 13 foot pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can rent one from your local auto zone or parts store. Um, if, if you're in a pinch and you just want to get it done, just remember you don't really have to crank these down a lot. Like it, the spec is, is minimal on them. All right, you just want to make sure it's not going to move. It's on there because if you do over torque them or you torque them unevenly, you can compromise that O-ring we just replaced. All right, so we have our marked distributor cap. Gotta slide this guy back on. And I, I always like to start it hand thread. You know, you don't wanna, you wanna make sure it's finger tight at first. You don't wanna cross thread it. And, you're gonna have a bad day <laughs> all right let me get these on and then i am going to hook these up according to order we're gonna pop these pigtails in as well all right all right we've got the cap in I'm gonna mark your cylinders according to all data cylinder one cylinder two cylinder three and cylinder four so luckily we've marked our cap already and we're just gonna plug and play all right, guys, well, got everything hooked back up. I'm gonna do the valve cover gasket on this too, so I'm just leaving it as is loose, but you wanna tie everything back up, you know, where it goes. They're created for a reason. Make sure you, these wires don't melt on something that's hot. All right, keep them all lined up. All right, we're gonna see. Let's see if she starts up. Welcome to the dude. I do apologize if she fluctuates. I have a vacuum leak to investigate. Let's see. And there you are. Alright guys, well, 
first video. First video. And there she goes. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I will have a talk through about how to fix the speedometer on this. And there is a process of resetting the ECU, which is located under the Shania. All right, guys, first video. Pray the doctor. Hopefully we rid the curse. Appreciate all the support. Please subscribe, that helps. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you.